the government will repeal Section 377A and decriminalize sex between men. I believe this is the right thing to do and something that most Singaporeans will now accept. Even as we repeal 377A, we will uphold and safeguard the institution of marriage. Under the law, only marriages between one man and one woman are recognized in Singapore. While we remain a broadly conservative society, gay people are now better accepted in Singapore, especially among younger Singaporeans. Most people accept that a person's sexual orientation and behaviour is a private and personal matter and that sex between men should not be a criminal offence. There are people who feel that this matter is not just about 377A, but the law itself is a marker for things they care deeply about, including family, marriage and social norms. The government will continue to uphold our family-centred policies. We are fully committed to that and we will continue to uphold marriage as defined as between men and women. So this will not change, this will not happen under the watch of the current Prime Minister and it will not happen under my watch. And that's why we are also at the same time proposing an amendment to the Constitution to protect the definition of marriage. In our collective view, there is a significant risk that 377A could be held unconstitutional and struck down on the basis that it is a breach of the equal protection provision. This could lead to same-sex marriages being recognised in Singapore and this in turn will also have an impact on other laws and policies that are built on our existing definition of marriage. Laws such as adoption, public housing, school curriculum, advertising and so on. So what we are planning to do is to put it in the constitution explicitly that parliament can define the institution of marriage, you know, in the way it has defined in the Women's Charter, and it can make other pro-family policies on the basis of that definition, or that marriage is between a man and a woman, and that these laws and policies which rely on the definition of marriage cannot be challenged in court by reference to Article 12, you know, or by reference to the Constitution, it will have to be dealt with in Parliament. I know that there are some Singaporeans who are also concerned beyond changes on laws and policies, concerned about the excesses of activism and advocacy on both sides, pro-LGBT and anti-LGBT. Some have given us feedback that uh, they have been subject to discrimination or even being harassed when they speak out and when they practice their faith and beliefs. People must have their freedom to practice their religion. Preachers must be able to preach. And uh, likewise, as I said, you know, if you don't hold pro-religious views, if you hold views uh, which are opposed to religion, you are free to, and you must be free to hold your views. No one should feel threatened because of their religious affiliation. No one should feel threatened because they are LGBT. What we seek is a political accommodation, one that balances different legitimate views and aspirations among Singaporeans. But in a society where diverse groups have strongly held opposing views, everyone has to accept that no group can have things all their way. So let us instead find ways to come together, learn to compromise, accommodate each other, focus on the common ground which we share, which is significant, and continue to work at building an ever more cohesive and united society.